Hello, and welcome to another edition of Fleet Momentum, produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. This series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders, trends, and product offerings in the fleet management industry. I'm Fleet Group Editor Chris Brown, and this episode is sponsored by and produced in partnership with XL Fleet. Today, I'm pleased to connect with Eric Fulmer, Director of Marketing for XL Fleet. We're going to talk with Eric on the different paths to fleet electrification. Before we jump into the conversation, remember to follow and connect with us on social media, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as our newsletter, to make sure you stay up to date on all the latest industry news, and so you don't miss another episode of Fleet Momentum. And now, here's my conversation with Eric. Well, welcome, Eric. First off, for the uninitiated, tell us briefly, what does XL Fleet do? Well, thanks, Chris. It's great to be here and, and really appreciate you having me on today. Um, XL Fleet is a leading provider of fleet electrification solutions. So we don't make vehicles from the ground up. Instead, we electrify many of the, the world-class OEM gas-powered fleet vehicles that fleets are already utilizing in their applications today. And we turn them into hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and soon all electric versions of those vehicles. Our customers have driven over 150 million miles so far on our systems. And uh, we provide an immediate path to sustainability uh, where there are you know, many barriers today, as, as we know. And we provide that immediate path to, to uh, adding sustainability value for fleets who want to electrify right away. You know, the, the transition to electric vehicles is probably the hottest topic in fleet today. Uh, you know, but to start the process, fleets need to manage a lot of noise between what the market is promising and what the reality is today, next year, five years from now, how can organizations navigate this realistically if they're looking to start electrifying their fleet soon? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, you would never necessarily know it to, to um, you know, read the news media, but the reality is that less than 2% of vehicles on the road today have any level of electrification whatsoever. So there's a, an enormous uh, opportunity ahead to improve on that. And you know, while there's been uh, you know a tremendous amount of announcements and and coverage and excitement and energy building around the space, which is fantastic, you know, the reality is that there is uh, a, a number, there are a number of challenges today that are impeding fleets from moving forward right away. You know, there is still a lack of charging infrastructure. Um, you know, both from a nationwide coverage perspective, but also in the in the uh, inside the buildings of, of fleets, you know there are implications and electrical implications, utility grid implications, you know to putting charging stations in, in facilities at scale uh, that need to be considered and and uh, you know corrected before fleets are able to adopt in full. And you still have um, you know at the end of the day for fleet applications, uh, you know a very limited supply of, of available EVs today to, to meet those needs. So, uh, and there's also pricing challenges. You know, we still haven't hit pricing parity on some of the, particularly some of the large, full, you know, the, the larger, more fully electrified vehicles out there uh, typically rely upon incentives to, to purchase. So there are a number of challenges that are, are being addressed currently, uh, but that, that are still laying in front of the industry for really improving on that 2% number right now. So, um, you know, the bottom line is that, that fleets, you know, in order to move forward and really assess where they are and where they want to be, um, you know, they really need to look at the complete landscape of available and future technologies, as well as what their own drive cycles and application requirements are for their electrification. So I would say, you know, first and foremost, look at your applications, look at the vehicles you want to drive and the, the vehicles you're already deploying in your fleet, what those applications look like and what your goals are for electrification and how soon you want to implement those solutions. So 
All of those are contributing factors and there are a wide range of options, not just on the fully electric side, but in the hybrid and plug-in hybrid options that are immediately available and can move the needle on those goals right away. Sure, yeah, uh, and you mentioned applications. So this is a follow-up to that. Um, Excel Fleet does collect data on its on-road units. Um, what kind of use cases are you seeing that are delivering the quickest payback and strongest ROI? How should organizations do the math to see what will work for them? Yeah, so you know we we've had over 4,000 vehicles deployed thus far. As I mentioned, we've we've got 150 million miles of of data and understanding about how those vehicles are being used. And and you know what I would say in terms of doing the math is 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 the math has really changed. Uh, you know, there in the early days uh, of XL Fleet, we were founded in 2009. Uh, it used to be where customers would come to us and say, "Okay, what's the price of the system? What's the price of gas?" How many miles am I putting on these vehicles annually? And then what's the ROI? What's the payback period? Today, the ultimate driver is much more about sustainability, not that ROI and, and total cost of ownership are not important, they're always critical, but sustainability is really driving the narrative today. And that's what we found from our customers, uh, as well as, as what we've heard you know, industry-wide. Uh, there are a number of initiatives out there that are mandating on an increasing frequency, the, the sustainability initiatives that used to be long-term goals are now becoming short-term realities for fleet managers that really need to, to make progress on those goals right away. So it's a little bit more difficult to quantify the value of sustainability targets. But when you think about all of the macro level environmental advantages to that, plus the, uh, you know, the ability to demonstrate that you are progressive and moving forward in electrifying your fleet vehicles, there are a number of significant advantages and you're mapping towards the sustainability goals that are increasingly becoming mandated and not, uh, not requested. Um, so all of these factors are kind of laying into the groundwork for this, but at the end of the day, our data suggests, you know, it's all the usual subjects for, uh, for the types of applications, but basically, you know, for hybrid or plug-in hybrid systems in particular, you're looking at vehicles that have, uh, you know, consistent drive cycles, uh, of, you know, usually uh, uh, stop and go traffic conditions, uh, certainly non-highway or, or relatively low idling time. Um, and, and there's a number, I mean, there's any number of, of usual suspects of, uh, of applications that you're talking about for those conditions, you know, Last mile delivery, certainly consistent routes, vehicles are coming back to a central location uh, afterwards. Um, you know, service vehicles, uh, shuttle buses, utility fleets, anything that is driving around a, uh, you know, a relatively standard uh, uh, drive cycle or route schedule, um, you know, is, is gonna be a good candidate for that. And, but even some of the, some of the more, um, uh, specialized applications like emergency vehicles, uh, ambulances, and even you know larger, medium, heavy-duty trucks like refuse uh, are, are becoming increasingly good candidates for electrification as well. So there's really any number of applications out there. So ultimately, you want to work with your electrification provider on identifying you know these are the vehicles we have in place. This is what we want to adopt. These are the type of drive cycles that we have. These are how we're driving our vehicles today. And your solution provider can help you kind of navigate that, that landscape and help you adopt vehicles and systems that are most appropriate for your applications and are going to give you the most significant improvement for what you're investing in. Yeah, I mean, it really is exciting to see the expansion of uh, different use cases as we move up the ladder, even into medium duty. Um, so, you know, we're well aware of the supply crunch of new vehicles today, and that looks like it may be going on for quite some time. Uh, for fleets looking to electrify now, uh, is retrofitting an option? What does that entail, and when does it make sense? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, XL Fleet doesn't uh, historically talk much about retrofitting as an option, but it is absolutely uh, a tremendous option, especially 
in light of the difficulty in acquiring new fleet vehicles right now. We've heard from fleets that it is more difficult to acquire vehicles right now than in any time in their decades of experience from fleet managers uh, letting us know that. And, and we've certainly seen that in the industry too. So retrofitting is a very viable path to electrification for a number of, uh, of applications. So we certainly uh, electrify via retrofits. Um, it's a great way if you have an existing fleet that you, you know, are, are uh, wanting to electrify in the short term. Uh, our systems take about a day of labor to install. So the process of, of, of um, the process of, of installing those systems is similar, if not identical, to what a ship through process would be. You're just pulling that vehicle out of service for a day while the installation is happening. But at the end of the day, you've got a brand new electrified system on your existing vehicle, and you can make immediate progress on your sustainability goals and, and start realizing those fuel economy benefits right away and not have to wait for you know, the new crop of vehicles to come online and, and be able to, to provide those systems via ship through, which is how our traditional you know, go-to-market uh, strategy is. So um, it's, it's a very viable solution for fleets who really want to electrify today, but may have difficulty right now in acquiring new vehicles because your sustainability goals are not on hold, even if your ability to to acquire vehicles is. So it's a great way to, to move the needle and, and make progress on those in a very unusual year uh, that I think everyone can agree that this certainly has been. Okay, last question. Uh, you know, let's circle back around to some of the larger vehicles, maybe vocation uh, specific vehicles such as refuse. Uh, what type of timeline are we talking about to electrify larger work trucks, I mean, those are sold in smaller numbers. What will be their options to electrify in this space? Yeah, XL Fleet is absolutely focused on, you know, we've, we've kind of set the standard on the class two through six range with the light to medium duty uh, vans and pickup trucks and, and box trucks that we electrify currently. We're certainly moving in the direction of the more medium to heavy duty applications. And Refuse is an application that we've really targeted as a great candidate for electrification. And you're right, there are a relatively small uh, percentage or number of refuse trucks on the road relative to the overall fleet industry landscape. Uh, but at the same time, those trucks are contributing about 1.4% of the overall uh, fuel consumption and, and, and you know, CO2 emissions of that, of that category. So, you know, relatively small number of vehicles, but a relatively large impact on the fuel consumption and the emissions that are being generated by fleet vehicles today. And, and refuse trucks drive on average probably 25,000 miles a year. So they're great candidates, stop and go traffic. They're always moving, they're always running routes. Um, really great candidates for electrification. We've seen a number of announcements from several uh, companies who are, who are looking to uh, to electrify that that industry. We announced a partnership earlier this year with Curb Tender, uh, which is a leading provider of, of refuse trucks, and we're going to be electrifying several models of their applications, their refuse applications uh, that will be broadly available in 2022. And uh, I've heard nothing but great progress from our team on on how that's going and. And uh, so we we'll look for some exciting announcements on that uh, in the near future from us. But it certainly is a great market and it's a great opportunity to electrify larger, heavier duty vehicles. And that really is for XL Fleet, a big part of the future of our, of our company and, and, and our strategy moving forward. Because you know, there's such a great opportunity to electrify and make a substantial impact uh, on those industries and, and in the environment. Uh, by reducing uh, emissions and improving sustainability goals of those fleets. Sure, great. Well, uh, that's all the questions I have, Eric. I mean, it is certainly really exciting times when it comes to electrification of fleets. Uh, I just want to thank you for joining us on another edition of Fleet Momentum video series. Great. Thanks very much for having me, Chris.